Okay, so um, what you didn't see me do here is just put little four little standoffs on there. Put little cover, cover plate on top. And then I hooked up my little buzzer here. There's two connectors on top of the board here. The red wire needs to go towards the outside. That's all you need to know. Um, plug that on there and that's it. And then now that I have the little... Remember I hooked up... Uh, Driver. I hooked up this little red wire here it was for my low voltage alarm well this will also make the little beeper beep right when the voltage goes too low so that's my low voltage beeper and my low voltage alarm wire connected there which is connected to my plus wire so all we got left to do now is uh, calibrate the ESC's and check for motor rotation so we're going to first calibrate the ESC's once the ESC's are calibrated um, then we're going to check for motor rotation so the first thing I want to do is uh, to calibrate the ESC's I'll turn on my radio let it turn on then I turn my throttle to hundred percent focus on this please Ted my radio is turned on and I move my throttle to hundred percent I'm using a double seven for this now full throttle and then I go and connect my my board but when I connect my board I need to hold these four buttons here sorry not not four buttons Num button number one button number four I need to press them down and hold them while I connect the battery and this is a little problematic with only two hands because you're trying to hold this there while you're holding this and connecting that together so my my video guy here Mr. Ted is going to help me uh, Ted, push on these number one and number four here. Hold them down. Then I'm going to connect the battery. Listen to the beeps. And I wait. One beep. Lower the throttle. And I hear the signal. It's done. Unconnect. And that's it. And that's it. Now it should be calibrated. Now I can connect that again. And see if my motors start at the same time. Now to arm the board, you want to have the trowel in the lower position and go full right and hold it there. A long beep telling you that uh, it's being it's armed. And then go. to disarm it, no throttle to the left. And now you see it's disarmed. Okay, now if you go to arm it like this. And it won't arm, right? It could be that your end point on your rudder is not high enough, or it could be that when your throttle is on zero, your trim, your throttle trim, right, is too high, and uh, so basically the the board is not reading zero throttle for the radio. So what you can do is just lower the trim a little bit by a couple percent, right, and then it should arm for you. Um, but essentially, as far as the radio is concerned, when you're going to use a KK2 board, you just want to set all your endpoints to 100% and your trims to zero, sub trims to zero, all the trims and sub trims to zero, and your endpoints for aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder should be on zero on on 100%. Uh, and the rest of the changes that you're going to make to alter the way this quad flies has nothing to do with the radio. It's all going to be done with the LCD display. Okay, so now let me arm the board and let me spool the motors and let's see which direction they spin in. Now, before I do that, let me explain this to you, actually. If you go on the LCD display, <clears throat> first thing you want to do once your KK2 board is connected is you want to go to Load Motor Layout. Once you go into that menu, it will show you all the different types of flight uh, configuration you can choose from tricopter to plus copter to airplanes, all this stuff. Me, I choose X copter, right? And once you choose that, there will be a little diagram showing on the screen showing you which motor is number one, two, three, and four. And it's also showing you which way the propeller is supposed to turn or which way the motor is supposed to turn. In this case, 
I've got number one, two, three, and four here in an X-Copter configuration, and it's like this. This one is supposed supposed to turn clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. Now let's check to see how we do. This is clockwise. It's good. Counterclockwise. It's good. So far I'm lucky on two motors. Now this should be clockwise. Oh, it's spinning counterclockwise. Let's check number four. Counterclockwise. It's good. So I did okay now. I made him. I, I I was unlucky with only one out of four motor. I got one motor who's not spinning in the right direction. So what I do is simple. I unplug two, any two wires. Doesn't matter which one. Unplug two wires from the ESCs. These little wires are stiff, and then I switch them around. So, like so. Now let's check that again. Now this should be clockwise. And there you go, it's clockwise. So all my motors are spinning in the right direction. They're all starting at the same time because the, it's calibrated. Right, now let me disarm the board. And so again, now we're down to talking about the, the, the settings in a KK2 board in order to, to go for, a, you know, it's a pre-flight check or uh, to check the settings in order to have decent settings to fly with this, flyable settings. Now, uh, first thing again, we loaded our motor configuration, X-Copter, and then we calibrated the ESCs, we checked for motor rotation, everything is good. Now, the only thing left to do really in order for this to, to fly well, uh, it should fly well with the stock configuration as far as PI, but we're, let's have a look at this. I'm going to go into in the menu in what's called PI Editor, and then I'm going to go to Roll, Elron, or uh, to Pitch Elevator. Doesn't matter with Pitch and Elron, with Elevator and Elron, doesn't matter. If you change one, it's going to change both all the time. So if you change the Elron, you're going to end up with the same figure for a pitch. And likewise, if you change the 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 pitch elevator, you're going to end up with the same PI settings for the ailerons. Now, what I recommend when you go into that, you're going to see four figures. At the top is P gain, then you got P limit, I gain, and I limit. So for for elevator ailerons, I recommend a starting point of 45, 100, 90. Sorry, no, no, no. Sorry, let me start again. For pitch. Elevator and and for Elron, you go 45, 100, 30, 20. And now after that, you go into yaw. And for yaw, I recommend going with 80, 20, 70, and 10. Now, this is going to fly for you, I'm almost guaranteed. If you're getting oscillation, go into pitch. Uh, elevator or Elron reduce the P gain, which is the first figure at the top, maybe five points at a time until the oscillation stopped. And if you go to land, right, and it bounces back up when you land, again, reduce the P gain. Now, if you try this and it's no issues, it lands fine, there's no oscillation, then you can try raising it five or ten points at a time, raise the P gain. Right, and on a quadcopter this size, you could be able to go all the way up to 80, maybe. It really depends on your setup and how much vibration you got and all this stuff. So I'm going to start up at 45 now, and I'm going to go ahead and do some PI tuning a little bit more later. But essentially, I am not going to cover the whole PI tuning setup. If you want to. Uh, I, what I've given you now is the starting points, good starting points, PI settings that will work for you. Um, if you want to go and do in-depth PI settings, um, which frankly is not all that necessary, especially not if you're a beginner, the settings I've given, I've given you now uh, are going to be fine. Uh, if you want to be picky about it, go into the KK2 thread on rcgroups.com, first page, and then you're going to find out it 
PI tuning setup procedure. Follow the step, step by step, and you may be able to get something that will work a little bit better for you. But frankly, if you're a beginner, uh, you're not going to notice the difference at all because it's not that significant. So, okay, so that's that. Now I've got um, basically I've got the I got everything hooked up. My motors are spinning in the right direction. I got the right PI settings. Uh, my ESCs are calibrated. I'm done. All I got left to do now is stick some propellers on there and I'm ready to go for a test flight. Um, one last thing, remember that this is clockwise, number one, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, and the propellers are like that too, right? You got clockwise propellers, this one, counterclockwise propellers you need to put the right propeller on there if you put a clockwise propeller on a counterclockwise rotating motor this is going to either not lift off at all or it's just going to flip upside down on you as soon as you turn on the throttle so be careful you put on the right propellers on there okay so that's it with this video in the next video I'm going to show you uh, just a quick uh, hover demonstration in an indoor area this uh, this this X copter we just finished building it together and show you if we're able to get that to hover or not. Frankly, this is an experiment. These motors spin insanely fast, 2,600 kV uh, each motors. This quad copter weighs about 700 grams uh, with the battery, but the motors have 850 grams of thrust. I am not even sure if this is going to fly or not. It's a test, but we'll have a look. This is what I'll show you in the next video. All right, stay tuned.